Hi everyone, I'm Beth from the West Dallas Public Library. Back again for episode two in this Who HQ Summer Book Club of Who Was Amelia Earhart. We're picking up with chapter two, A Woman of Character. In the fall of 1916, when Amelia was 19 years old, she boarded a train for the Ogans School in Pennsylvania. Amelia didn't mind going far away from home. She was starting on a new adventure. The head of the Ogon School was a woman named Miss Sutherland. At first, Amelia did not like her, but in time, she changed her mind. Miss Sutherland was strict, but very smart. She had opinions on all sorts of subjects. And although Miss Sutherland had many chances to marry, she never did. Miss Sutherland was more interested in her career than a husband. Miss Sutherland was an independent woman who made a big impression on her pupils. Those are her students. The other students and teachers at Ogans admired Amelia. She was shy, but charming. She was a good athlete. She was also a practical girl. In a letter home to her mother, Amelia wrote, I don't need spring clothes, so don't worry about sending me money. I know you all need things more than, I, more than I. Once, Amelia even bought hand-me-down shoes from a friend. In her second year, Amelia was elected vice president of her class. Amelia wrote the, the class motto. She, be, she strongly believed in what it said, honor, is the foundation of courage. While Amelia was at Ogans, the United States entered the First World War. During the Christmas holiday of 1917, Amelia went to Toronto, Canada. Her sister Muriel was in school there. Amelia's mother also joined them. In Toronto, Amelia saw soldiers who had been wounded in the war. Amelia wanted to help. Within a week, she made a decision. She was not going back to Ogans. Instead, she would stay in Toronto. Amelia would train to be a nurse's aide and work in a hospital. People who knew Amelia weren't surprised. Amelia always acted on what she believed in. Chapter three, Amelia chooses a career. Amelia worked in a Toronto hospital until World War I was over. Then she came back to the United States. She wanted to study science. Maybe she would become a doctor. Amelia decided to enroll at Columbia University in New York City. At that time, most men wanted wives who would stay home. That was fine with most women, but not Amelia. She could not understand why a woman had to give up work just because of a wedding ring. Amelia wanted a career. She just couldn't decide what career she wanted. Okay, quick blurb about the women's suffrage movement. Sounds painful, doesn't it? The word suffrage. It doesn't mean suffering. It's about getting the right to vote. It wasn't until the 1890s that Wyoming became the first state to let women vote. By 1913, when Amelia Earhart was a high school student, women could vote in only 12 of the 48 states. There were only 48 states at that point. Do you know who we were missing? Alaska, Hawaii. But the voices of protest were getting louder Suffragettes marched in the streets. Many were arrested and put in jail, but the fight continued. Finally, on August 26, 1920, so 100 years ago, the 19th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution was passed. Women in every state of the Union had won the right to vote. Okay, back to Amelia. After some time in, at Columbia, Amelia quit school again. 
She went to Los Angeles. Amelia's parents were back together again, and she moved in with them. Amelia's family was hoping that Amelia would settle down soon. Amelia was seeing a young man named Sam Chapman. Sam asked Amelia to marry him, but Amelia knew that Sam would not want her to have a career, so she said no. Amelia knew what she didn't want. Still, she was drifting. Then on Christmas Day in 1920, her life changed. 23-year-old Amelia Earhart and her father were with a crowd of people in Long Beach, California. They were all looking up into the sky. Why? An air show was taking place. Pilots raced each other in their planes. They also did incredible tricks like wing walking. Do you know what that is, wing walking? So it's, here, I'll see. Do you see this plane? Can you see that, I hope? People would literally walk on top of the wings while it was up in the air. No, thank you. Okay, Amelia was fascinated. She had just one question. How much would it cost to take flying lessons? At that time, there were no airports or runways. Planes took off from big empty fields. Three days later, Amelia and her dad went to Rogers Field. It was there that she took her first plane ride. The flight was 10 minutes long. The pilot sat in front, Amelia sat behind him. The cockpit was completely open. Amelia and the pilot wore goggles to protect their eyes. The plane bounced across the bumpy field for takeoff. Then it slowly rose into the air. Right away, Amelia was hooked. She later said, as soon as we left the ground, I knew I myself had to fly. Amelia was not drifting any longer. From that day on, she had a goal. Amelia was going to become a pilot. At nearby Kinner Airfield, a woman named Netta Snook gave flying lessons. A woman pilot. This was just what Amelia wanted. Netta agreed to teach Amelia to fly. It would cost one dollar per minute. In 1921, that was a lot of money, but Amelia was willing to pay. The next day, Amelia arrived for her first flying lesson in, a riding, in riding pants, boots, and a jacket. She had walked three miles from the streetcar to the airfield, but she wasn't tired. She was excited that her dream was about to come true. That first day, Amelia only taxied the plane on the ground, but it wasn't long before she was up in the air. Amelia was a good student. She just seemed to know naturally what to do. <clears throat> Netta and Amelia became good friends. At 24, Netta was only one year older than Amelia. Amelia wanted to learn all about airplanes. She pestered Netta with questions all the time. When the weather was good, Amelia practiced flying. When the weather was bad, Amelia didn't waste that time. She read and studied about flying. Amelia also learned to repair airplanes. She cut her long hair short. She bought a leather jacket. The jacket was soon wrinkled and oil stained. Amelia didn't care. Learning about airplanes kept her busy all the time. Soon, Amelia wanted her own plane. With her mother's help, she bought a small one at Kinner Airfield. Netta thought the plane was too small to be safe. Amelia ignored her. She had her plane painted yellow and she named it the Canary. On December 15, 1921, Amelia took the test for her license. It was a little less than one year from when she took her first lesson, but she passed. Amelia Earhart was now an airplane pilot. It's a good place to stop. We'll pick up tomorrow with Amelia Takes Off. Thank you for watching. 
Remember, there are past episodes on our YouTube page as well if you want to check those out. But we'll pick up tomorrow with who was Amelia Earhart. Bye, everyone.